All right, so this is a quick video response to Black Pigeon Speaks a video titled Why Radical Individualism in a Tribalizing Society Won't Work. Now, I'm making this video, this response video, because um, I'm, I get a sense that I'm missing a lot of the why in how Black Pigeon Speaks uh, is construing his case. And... Uh, the reason for why I address that is because I sincerely believe as a long time uh, subscriber of Black Pigeon Speaks that he's quite capable of arguing this case a lot more strongly. He's uh, also drawing on uh, the work of another guy who's, whose work I really know and whom I know personally, uh, Jordan Peterson, Dr. Jordan Peterson. And uh, so so this is a, a clash of two titans that I'm... Uh, I, both of whom I admire, and, um, and yeah, I can definitely see how this case can fall either, or I can see a lot of the arguments, but uh, I do feel like they were missing from, um, from Black Pigeon Speaks' uh, case. So anyways, I'll include his video, and I'm going to uh, go into a little bit of these things, and I'm not going to ar argue the case for the man, but I'm um, going to... Uh, urge him to argue the case deeply because I would love to see that video made by him. So at any rate, yes, um, this, this whole idea of radical, uh, individualism or, or just, um, looking for, um, the, the meritocracy through the, uh, maximization of, uh, individual capacity. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it is an ideal. There's like anything else. It's, it's an ideal and, you know, we can, we can hold our ideals in high regard. Doesn't mean that we're going to go out and realize them every day, all the time. And then of course, you know, how strong is that, that ideal within a, any given person? And, and is that generally shared in a society, which again, goes back to this whole question of our, uh, Vulcanized, tribalized, uh, modern existent in what uh, existence in what Black Pigeon Speaks rightfully points out as the post-Western world. And Black Pigeon Speaks, love that term because you're right. It is we live in a post-Western world. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and, and another another trend that is very uh, well to some degree evident um, is that uh, fans of Jordan B. Peterson individualistic as they may be, have uh, a tendency to be now emerging. It looks like they're emerging as a group, <laughs> another group thrown into the mix of, uh, of what's going on. So, so there is a, a point there in Black Pigeon Speaks favor. Now, that said, if that group grows really strong, having that value that, you know, um, value of individualism and uh, maximizing the capacity and utility of each and every person, then of course that group might be able to push through. But that is then, uh, you know, an entire uh, game theory computation uh, of odds type of uh, exploration we would have to do there. And uh, quite frankly, yeah, you know, we can cal try and calculate our way to it um, as much as, as we want. But uh, at the end of the day, we're still going to have to see what times bring, bring forth, right? So, uh, so yeah, there is that. And uh, the other trend that may end up happening is, uh, again, the, you know, if you take intersectionality to its uh, logical conclusion, it's just going to divvy up the minorities within minorities within minorities within minorities till you end up with what we've always known on the libertarian end of the spectrum, the ultimate minority of one a group of one, the individual. So uh, we might end up with these uh, groups just constantly uh, antagonizing each other. And as we're seeing a lot on the left, and we'll see as uh, we'll see this on the uh, on the uh, in group preferenced right uh, a lot more as as they they will rise towards uh, uh, more power and influence they'll, 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 that trend's going to be born there as well they, you know you see those groups when they see that power is right there for us to take it um, they start um, attacking each other like hyenas and uh, we're seeing that within the latest thing I pointed this out within the LGBTQ community uh, um, then of course uh, within various factions and approaches to uh, to the welfare state where you know it's there's almost like an orthodoxy. You're uh, you're not 
you're not a real socialist. You're not, you're not too, you know, far enough to the left, if you will. People are now bashing out that Bernie Sanders is not far enough to the left for them. And, and then even, you know, within racial groups, uh, you, you know, you're, you're too pale to be a real black or you're an Uncle Tom or, you know, all these kind of things that these, these groups will keep divvying themselves up when either A, they're threatened or B, they see a shot at grabbing more power and then someone wants to ascend through the ranks. Now, this is going to happen on both the, the right and the left during those various parts in the cycle when A, they're... they're on having an uh, getting an extra upper hand or they're getting threat threatened and being pushed down the ladder and you know they they need a new strategy they're going to going to be breaking up you know so there is a chance that the breaking up of those groups into more and more subgroups is going to drive us there but uh, again as uh, we've seen in a lot of places and the term balkanization exists for a reason if we look at the balkans historically if we look at the middle east historically then uh we we very much see that um once you have this disease in either a society or a geographic location it's very very difficult to ever get rid of it and uh yeah you know the people who brought this about in previously peaceful western countries uh they should be held accountable because they brought in uh a disease that uh is going to be with us as a reality, uh, as a pandemic for a really long time, a a social cohesion disease, a cognitive uh, um, and and value assessment disease, um, and and yeah, given just aside from everything, uh, what it can be considered right or wrong, what is moral and immoral, um, uh, just or unjust, just the 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 fact that they have created. Uh, a beast of a nature that that wasn't there before and uh is going to be more to the detriment of uh societies and and uh human development than uh than you know to uh to progress uh that's uh you know empirically that speaks for itself and uh i you know coming from the libertarian uh, end of the spectrum i acknowledge that uh we've been uh wrong and and shaky on this uh this topic as well. It was uh, an idea among libertarians for the longest of time, and, and among many still is, that you can uh, elevate the global utility by uh, simply just uh, moving labor around where uh, wherever it's most needed. Uh, now we've seen that uh, it's not, human beings aren't quite there to be able to just jump into new places and integrate uh, on the spot. Obviously you have to pick up a language, a customs, uh, a way of, uh, you know, um, social interaction within a certain place we still uh live uh under the reality of cultures and civilizations and uh linguistic spheres that's uh it's an emp empirical reality that we can't really deny just yet it's <clears throat> it's right there uh so yeah so uh so we've uh as much as i would love to see a uh integrated cooperative world we're just in the way that it's been practiced we're just not there yet and uh we now risk at losing every gain that we've made over the last two or three hundred years uh, just because people with some not too well thought out ideas have been uh, uh, pushing things by force. And uh, it's, uh, it's a tragedy to observe that. Now, so at any rate, um, since we're going to be obviously stuck in this uh, situation for uh, quite a while longer, it's uh, now, now it's the question of how... Uh, how can it be navigated? How is it going to play out? And uh, and especially for as long as it, it goes on, and yes, politics will remain a uh, a fight of uh, um, group identity for quite a while as well. And uh, we're going to have to look at, at opportunities to uh, make gains to uh, to shelter the individual um, from the negative byproduct of that. that. That would be what I would be looking for in the political realm. As much as I, as a, a libertarian, don't see politics as a means uh, or as a tool that will uh, produce solutions, you know, <laughs> constructive solutions. Um, I, I really uh, don't, don't think much of politics as a tool for positive change, if you but then again, that is also uh, it's, a, it's an ideological stance based on uh, some 
severe empirical assessment. Now, um, what else was I going to throw into this mix? I'm, I'm babbling around in circles uh, quite a bit already, and I, I realize that, but I, I think most of you guys are, are kind of uh, following my scattered um, scatterbrains uh, trail of thought here. Because I'm just really throwing in a lot of uh, points for consideration, and uh, hopefully Black Pigeon Speaks uh, takes some of this and, and um, does a, a in-depth update. So, um, at any rate, what else was I going to throw in there? Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, actually, I think I may have just uh, babbled enough at this point. Um, what I've learned throughout my experience, especially over the past few years, is uh, the world has revealed itself to me um, to be becoming a certain game, a very dark, sinister, and vicious game. And um, the reason for why it, it elevates itself and it, it looks so clear to me is uh, because I, I, I genuinely feel like I understand it. Um, I see a game that I really don't want to play, but um, I recognize the game and uh, I see it as something ma manageable so that in the event that I would want to play it or would find myself forced to play it, um, Knowing that I, I would do very well at it uh, puts me at peace in some ways, but knowing the dark and sinister nature of it also causes great distress and concerns. Um, and it does eat at my soul. Now, then, of course, for me to reconcile that reality with myself is to ask, me, ask myself, um, if I were to go out all in and play the game, who would I want to play it for? What would I want to play it for? Where would I want the windfall of my successes to land and be of benefit? What is the benefit that I would want the byproduct of my participation in said game to do? And uh, making sure that uh, that is something worthwhile and, and that that becomes something um, that I can look back on and say, well, hey, at least I didn't add more to the carnage and fire uh, and uh unjustly so even you know uh, all unjustly so it's always unjust um to to add more to the carnage and fire but if i can uh you know be uh more of a remedy than a continued toxin then that will be something that i can hopefully at the end of my days reconcile no i think i'll end it on that note Black Pigeon Speaks, look at this, pick up the topic, go deeper. Um, if you want to uh, reach out and do a collab, let's do that. I'm all down for it. We'll find the time. As, uh, as busy as I've been and neglective of my uh, audience, and I'm sorry, guys, uh, we will address that as well. I have no excuses, and I will make no excuses. There are reasons, but I will make no excuses, because I don't believe in excuses. So, at any rate, without further ado, that's it for now. Finding the right hand. Viking out.